With Apple announcing the addition of lossless audio at Dolby Atmos through spatial audio, what does that actually mean for the average Apple listener? You may see certain features and logos mentioned such as Apple Lossless, Apple Digital Master, and Dolby Atmos. I'm Lauren Bregetzer, the audio professor. I'm going to explain to you exactly what these mean to you, the consumer, and what the benefits are. First off, lossless audio has been available on services like Tidal, Amazon Music HD, and Kobuz, but these services have far fewer subscribers than Apple Music. Most streaming services will stream lossy audio. This includes Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, Amazon Music, and Tidal. There are the few previously mentioned services that offer a tier with lossless audio for an additional cost, such as Tidal and Amazon Music HD. Apple has announced that their lossless streaming will come at no extra cost for the service. After this announcement, Amazon HD quickly eliminated the extra cost for their lossless HD tier as well. So what does lossless really mean and does it make a difference? First off, lossless audio is at least CD quality. Anything that's referred to as high resolution audio can be anything higher than CD quality. This can range from the marginal with a slightly higher sample rate to the extreme at four times the sample rate and 50% more bit depth. It's like saying two videos are in high definition, where one is at 720p while the other is in 8K. While they're both in high definition, one has a significantly higher resolution than the other. The big question is, does it really matter? Well, it really depends on your listening environment. If you're listening on AirPods from the base model to the max model, Bluetooth cannot carry a lossless audio signal, so you'll only be hearing compressed music anyway. Also, if you're listening in the car with all the background noise, odds are you won't be able to hear a difference. However, listening on a nice system at home in a quiet environment, the difference in quality can be noticeable. Same can be said with good wired headphones. Now, lossless audio will take up a significant more amount of data. If you're listening on your phone, you may want to do that only when you have an unlimited Wi-Fi connection, as the size of the lossless audio file is 2.5 to 4 times the size of a standard compressed audio track. This will also impact your phone's storage if you choose to have your music library stored locally on there. All in all, giving consumers more options for the same price is a good thing. Now onto the question as to whether high-resolution audio is worthwhile. Well, the science is unsettled, but many people swear by their high-resolution music, so I'll leave it at that. As far as what is an Apple Digital Master and what does it mean, well, it's primarily a set of standards that Apple certified mastering engineers hold the audio to when submitting songs to Apple Music. In reality, it's mostly a marketing term. Any decent audio engineer will hit those same specifications, so it really doesn't mean anything. Now, lastly, let's address music being played in Dolby Atmos. This is something that Tidal has done, as well as Cobuzz with select hardware. To oversimplify it, Dolby Atmos is a scalable surround sound system commonly used in movie theaters, home theaters, movie streaming services, and increasingly some music services. You'll be able to listen to music released in Dolby Atmos through any Apple hardware that supports spatial audio. This includes many models of AirPods and their most recent iPhones and iPads. Additionally, you'll be able to listen to the Dolby Atmos audio through a compatible Dolby Atmos receiver and television. Hopefully this clears things up regarding a new lossless additions to Apple Music. Take care and enjoy your music with more options than ever before.